it out by uh, having you tell me your name, each of you, and tell me your name. My name, Calvin Pryor. Many, many Pryors. And when were you born? I uh, was born in Wright County on the Gasconade River. And what year? Uh, 18... Uh, Ninety-six. I was born in Webster County, Missouri. In what year? Nineteen three. Nineteen <laughs> three. Okay. And who were your parents? Uh, Sam Price, Simon, Betty, uh, Rob. Yeah, Betty, her, her, her name was Betty. Also. It's bad. Huh? Okay. What was her maiden name? Uh, who was she before she was married? Uh, she knew her closer, didn't she? Betty Pryor. Betty Pryor. Uh, what was her name before she was married? I say, what was her name before she was married? Her mother, mother, Cox. Oh, Cox. Okay. That's why they met Mary's County. <laughs> and then who were your parents? Uh, Albert Hudson and Amy Hudson. <laughs> and what was your mother's maiden name? I was a Hudson. You were a Hudson, but I mean, you, what was your mother's? My mother's name, she was Climber. Climber, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did your father do for a living? Huh? What kind of work did your father do? He farmer, mostly. Okay. What about your father? He was a farmer. Okay, both farmers? Yeah. Okay. He was a carpenter, too, part of the time. When he had time to yeah, I he, he, built a, <laughs> he, he built a car, uh, uh, railroad station at Conway. Huh. That's years ago. What year was he born? What year is he born? And I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to get back the records on that. Okay. <laughs> I've got them all someplace. I've got the records in. Okay, we might look directly. Is that Conway Railroad Station still stand? No, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we can check on that too. Uh, what's the first thing you remember as a child? Remember what? What's the first memory you have as a child? I can't understand it, Mom. What? I, I can't understand him. What remembers? Huh? I didn't understand. Yeah, you. what's your earliest memory as a child? When you oh, were... what was your earliest memory as a child? Oh, that takes you. That'll take you back a long time. Uh, that's the only one I can remember. Uh, good. Is uh, I want my dad to cut corn in the dry year. And uh, we got up there and he went to cut it. He, wouldn't, he couldn't cut it, he had to pull it. It's a dry year. And uh, we, I tromped it, as I remember, I, I tromped that stuff in the wagon box. How old do you think you were then? I was about seven or eight, I guess. That's about the time you tore your britches and sewed them up with corn. That's uh, that one of the gathering corn. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a little feller, and he's out with his dad, you know, and he had a right brand new pair of britches on. And he, he tore them, flung up, flung up the leg there. And he sat down and got the corn shucks and punched holes in each side of their hands, sewed them up with them corn shucks and tied them. 
What's your earliest memory? Yeah, I can remember way back there. <clears throat> but uh, the good remembrance, I guess, is when my mother was making a lot of soap. And she made me a doll, uh, a, a rag doll, and stuffed it with bran. And I called him Old Doc. I called it, named it after Doc Huff. He was our doctor. And so when she got her soap done, uh, she went in the house and I went with her and I left my old dog out there. And the next morning I went out there and my old dog was gone. The horses had got it and tore it open and let the brand all out of it. <laughs> What about Christmas? Huh? Can you remember your first Christmas? What kind of presents you got? Your first Christmas? Huh? Your first Christmas? Oh. I can remember, uh, that's the only one I can remember is when the, uh, uh, my mother's brother, uh, some of his folks come from Christian County to visit us. They bought me a little old wagon. Uh, I still got it. You do? That's still pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. Then uh, they remember giving me a, a little old uh, bank, uh, put my pennies in, penny bank. I still got it. Still got that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What kind of decorations did they have on the tree? Huh? What kind of decorations did they have on the Christmas Didn't tree? None. No, Didn't none. It? Hung with socks up around the fireplace. <laughs> yeah. What about you? What could you? Your first Christmas that you can remember. Well, I can remember when my, my dad and mom would be Santa Claus, you know, and they'd make us kids go to bed pretty early so Santa Claus could come. So we went to bed, and, and I thought to myself, I'm going to go to wait and see tonight what old Santa Claus looks like. Oh, that's pretty nice. So I... Uh, Laid awake and they went out and got the treats, you know. We'd had our stockings all hung up, you know, around them. Yeah. Didn't have no Christmas trees like they have now. Huh. And, and so when, uh, when they went out, I, I said, <clears throat> I guess I'll see what Santa Claus brought me. <laughs> My mother says, you little old booger, you, he'll never come to you again. <laughs> oh, well, he didn't either. What kind of presents did you get besides that? Or? I got a doll. Doll. And then my sister, she took the hoop and cough and liked to die. And, and Mama made me let her have my doll, you know, she got crying for it. And she <laughs> took it out and broke it. <laughs> Well, I have lost my dog. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, going to school? Can you tell me about your first school? Uh, first year in school, I was only... I remember... Uh, I was mine, I think. I think I was nine years old. Nine years old? When school barefooted. <laughs> Did you have to walk very far? It wasn't long, long after that, uh, we'd have a uh, school over there, the Cope School, and uh, come up with snow. I was over there barefooted. Mitchell Benton was uh, our teacher. Yeah, he said, you better ride out of home. 
Men du, jag är gammal nu då. På dagen. Så jag... Det är bara mamma här för jag gick för att gå creek. Jag menar det gud att gå till creek. And uh, had to wait the creek. And one was a little uh, house where a neighbor lived right up, right up on the bank there. I got up on my feet, it's freezing all the time. I got up there and uh, Miss Barrett, she got an old pair of socks and put them on. And uh, warmed my feet around the stove, uh, the fireplace a little while, while I dug out of home. Uh, I, 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 the next day, the next school day, I went, I took my shoes. <laughs> but it's only, I only had about three months of school. Oh. And then fall of the year. Was this his? That. I don't know where that's the one he got for. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, that's right. It used to wind up and it'd, it'd turn around all over the floor. <laughs> it's kind of like me, it's got dilapidated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. <clears throat> what about your school experience? Uh, we had uh, s six months of school, I think it was. We had to walk to school, take our dinners. Little. It wasn't funny to go to school that day. You had about two miles to go. Hmm. Uh, two miles and a half I had to go. <laughs> walk. Uh, I thought a lot of my teachers. Uh, the clerk, uh, at that time they called him the clerk, took care of their uh, school business. He enumerated over a hundred uh, to go to school. And he, he had to cut it down or they'd have to build another schoolhouse. Huh. Did that flash? I don't think it did. Hmm. What about uh, your first car? Can you remember when you saw that? The what? The very first car you ever saw? Oh, uh, the little Model T, first one I've seen. My dad bought it, bought me a little old Model T, and he was just so tickled over it. He just thought it was rich. <laughs> and he uh, got it to shed and made him some blocks that he'd raise his wheels up, put them blocks on it. So they wouldn't take Yeah, I could have to keep the tar off of the ground. Flash is not going to work. What about your first car? You it's a Model T. Model T also. Huh? I'll take some more pictures a little later here. There's something bad in my hide and when you think it's coming up the hill. How old were you when you saw your first car? Huh? How old were you when you saw your first car? Saw the first one. I might as well have Ten years old. I, I, I remember. I heard it coming. I I heard the word of it being the car. So uh, we were living out there on the farm, and and uh, I heard it coming. So I, I was out there. I jumped over the fence, laid down where I could see what was it pulling that thing. I looked up through the crack of the fence. Look up there to see what it's pulling. It come out around right close to me. And the motor part, I couldn't see the motor, but I could see the back part of it. It looked like a 
a bugger who used me in a chain running back there. And that's about all I can remember every day. Huh. How old were you then? I guess I was 10 or 12 10, years 10 old. 10 or 12. And was the first one you saw was a Model T or? <coughs> yeah. Okay. I might have been a little older than that, but I don't think I was. What sort of games did you play when you were children? Huh? What kind of games did you play when you were children? Uh, ball games and when I was at school, back in uh, our base, they called it. Fox and Goose. Want to get after them and keep them off of the base, you know. And uh, <laughs> funny part about it, there was a. Uh, I, I, I guess I about outlaw any of them. Uh, one after me. I had a big old black oak tree. Stand out in the yard. Big old black oak tree. Stand out in the yard. That was my base. That was a home. And I turned around to look to see if they was after me, about to catch me. I turned around and I landed my nose in that, up in that tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, the blood just flew. And the kids all gathered around there, and they, I, I, of course I fell over. And, and the Metro, he, Metro Benton was a teacher. He come running out there and said, what's the matter with him? He ran into a tree, and he he grabbed me up like and grabbed my nose and pulled it out. He said it was just as flat as it could be. He cut up my nose and pulled it out. <laughs> and there's one side of me yet. It closed so dead. Yeah. Broke. Better be looking where he's going. <laughs> what kind of games did you play? I don't remember. We didn't play very many games. We had to work. <laughs> <coughs> I take my kids out in the field, and take them a quilt, and set them on it, and then I'd work out there about all day. Come in, get dinner, go back. That's the way we played. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was small, do you remember when I was small? Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, we we papered our wall with uh, newspapers, and they didn't have no rugs on the floor. They just had the old floor and the cracks in the floor, you know. And our dad, our dad, we'd save up our pennies, and we'd get down there and play penny, match penny, and one that could throw their penny. Closest to that crack, we'd get the pennies. Yeah. And all of us kids would get down there, you know, and play. That's kind of funny. <laughs> 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 and they would play blindfold, you know, blindfold. I don't know whether you ever played that or not. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Your first jobs, were they, I guess, both on farms then? Yeah, we was raised on the farm. So you just grew up doing chores then. <laughs> Can you remember when World War One started? Do you know when it started? Yeah, can you remember when it started? Nineteen sixteen, was it? Well in Europe it started in fourteen, but seventeen is when we got in it, but can you remember that as a child? Uh, no. Well, yeah, or two. He got out. Well, he got out of the Army in 1918. And he come down to my house for dinner. I didn't even know him, but my uncle brought him down from church for dinner home with him. And I got acquainted with him. And Baby, you but. Broken. Uh, and what? We just kept going together until we got married. <laughs> <laughs> Still together. Mm -hmm. seven, seven, Seventy-six years. Yeah. Quite a while. 
How did you get into the army? Me? Uh, I guess it was called drafted in 1918. Yeah. I've got a picture. It went to Hartwell to want into came. Yeah, we'll copy that directly. Where did you go into the army at? Uh, well, Donald Trainers came from some candies. Did you leave from this area? Huh? Did you leave from this area here to go to Kansas? Yeah, I was left over there. I went to Hartwell, Cali C to saw that and get ready. Okay. I went to, to Mansfield, and there's a, tra a bunch of them coming in from the, from the east. So we all got on the train and drove us through. It's called the Kansas City and had a supper and run on into Camp Punston. So we got off the got us unloaded and put us in a, a stable. I call them stables where they kept horses. They had to use horses then. Yeah. And we had to stay in there, the, I think about a day and night before we get signed out to the company. <clears throat> what time of year was it? Uh, 1918, I believe. It was. I've got discharge oh. registry papers. Okay, we'll look at those directly. Was it in the spring? I believe it was uh, 17 or 18. Was it in the summer? Huh? Was it in the summertime when you went? Yeah, out? in the summertime, I wanted to go out there, but we. Well, that's what right. long. We got a bag of hard water to pull our. Yeah, it's in the fall of the year. Uh -huh. Oh, I can't get my head to it. I'm right. I'm right. It, uh, <laughs> what kind of training did you? Huh? Did, what kind of training did they give you when you were at Camp Funston? You uh, what? What kind of what? Training. Did the army? What did he do at Camp Funston? Oh, what do you have to do? Mm -hmm. What do you have to do at Camp Funston? Funston. <laughs> what do you have to do at the Camp Funston? Oh, I just train, train. I was in a uh, heavy artillery. Artillery, yeah. First, uh, first gunner. I come out with a first gunner uh, with a heavy artillery, 4.7. Hmm. Can you remember the number of your outfit? You remember what your outfit was? Like the the division and the company? That you were in? Uh, I can't. I can't get you a question. Um, I just... Can you remember the name of your army outfit? Oh, I don't know. It's uh, was in the uh, twenty third. I believe twenty third uh, regiment. And I was in Company D. I, I mean, Battery D, 30 feet artillery. I get it right after a while. What was that last part? 30th field. 30th. Okay. Uh, what division were you in? My vision? Yeah. Good. <laughs> I, what division in the Army were you in? What division? Thirties, I think. Yeah, we could check the discharge papers. That was the last division getting down there. Today is Armistic Day, and they all got word in there. There was a company of darkies. Just next. Uh, Building down where we stayed, 
And they got up there and some, after they found out all this, he signed the door, they got to throw their bed and clothes and cops and everything out and they're raising something and had to call the patrolman in there to stop them. They just cut and arrested I'm going home to Mossy. <laughs> they, uh, they, they had a trouble for me. Well, we had our, we, before that, uh, we got a call to go across the water. We packed her, took her straw bed and dumped them out and backed off our cops, got everything, it goes all in the sacks I carry with us. And the uh, train was on the track. And the flu broke out. Uh -oh. And the quarantine is whole camp. Then we had to go back and kill bed ticks and stuff and get them back there again. And, um, we were out on the drill field in the fall of the year, the sun was hot. Every once in a while you see one of them drop out. You go lay down and roll up in a blanket or something like that. Finally, all got back down there and checked it. A lot of them had to go to the hospital. Finally, I had to go. I tried to keep out of it as long as I could, but the, the nurse come in there and examined the rest of us and found out I had, that I had to go. They put me in a hospital. Get up there is, uh, oh, I don't think I directly. It's an old fort. Uh, they put us in there and so, uh, one, one night, one died, a fellow died on one side of me, next night, the next, another one died. On on the other side. And I told the mother, so I said, if you, if you don't drag me out, I said, I'll be in the next one. And she said, wait till I come back. And, and she, me and her together, what strength they had, we put my car back up in her office. Her wasn't allowed to do that. But she came out, get me away from that racket. Yeah. Uh, it's in a pneumonia zone where we was at. Uh, the ops drunk us, oh, he yeah, didn't think anything. We, we couldn't get uh, nurses enough to take care of him. And I stayed in there, I don't know, three or four days, and finally I got up to work and get out, and I put me in a big old building out there. But some of the rest of it was better. We finally got up and got up out there, and uh, uh, me and uh, all the boys, I don't know who it was, with me. Uh, we walked out there on the yard, and they had them boys stacked up like cordwood. We sat on the boy that just made me so sick I couldn't. I was, <laughs> finally got able to get back down to the camp, and I, I, was, I think it was twelve, twelve of my company passed on. Hmm. Uh, they never got back to where they could get the drill on. My father did get the drill on and uh, used that old uh, machinery to pull my horses. We had to uh, go out on the field. One old boy said to me, he said, why, why can't I do that? And I said, I guess you can. Yeah, it's a little easier job. What I had, I was a gunner. I, I was a puppy up out where you look through all them whoppers and turn the shoes and get everything right, you know. And uh, finally, I, I got up. He got in and took his place, and he had that pointed on the 
smoke stack down there at uh, Fort Riley. <laughs> If he'd have fought it, if he'd have, if he'd have fought it, we'd have hit it. Mm -hmm. And I changed all of his uh, numbers and all that and turned it around a little bit. And I made the first shot and uh, the big old wagon sheet. It was up over a hill. I couldn't see it, but you could see it through them on the moppers, you know. They had things on there. And the first shot, I just tore it all to pieces. And the whole captain said, you're good enough, said, so you can get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of medicine did they give you when you had the flu? Huh? What kind of medicine did they give you when you had the flu? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't remember. Probably quinine. <laughs> quinine, I'd imagine. Yeah, probably. Quinine and calomel, about all the was in medicine I'm back in them days. <laughs> I remember one time I got sick over at home, they gave me a, a dose of it, and my head just went like that. <laughs> just crazy. I couldn't get up out of bed. I had to leave. <laughs> How was the Army food? Huh? How was the food in the Army? Pretty good. I have to cook part of it. Oh, you helped it? Oh, yeah. Uh, I helped cook all the time. Oh. Yeah. What kind of food did they have? Huh? What kind of things did you fix? What, what kind did, of things did you cook? What did you cook? Cook? Yeah. Oh, we had great big old round bars and put their beans in and stuff and, uh, like that. And we had, we had a big oven that you could cook cornbread. And my captain found out I could make cornbread. He said, yeah, you make my cornbread. <laughs> he was a, an old, uh, I don't know, he was, he was a, he had come from the west somewhere out there. He, he'd been a cow puncher. Uh -huh. He got into the army. You remember his name? Huh? You remember his name? Mm. Long time. Robert E. O'Connor. Huh, that's pretty good. <laughs> you can remember things as I can. Huh? You can remember things I can't. Well, there's some things I can remember and some things I can't. Uh, he he said uh, that they made a lot of stew, vegetable stew. Yeah. And he won't eat that now. But he said he got turned against it. All right. I, I've seen the fourth car plane come in for uh, Camp Constant. Somebody in the back here. I'll be better than you. Turn it off a second. Any more light on her face? Tell me about your first airplane you saw. That first airplane that you saw. There's uh, the Camp Foster and Kansas. <laughs> Let's see if we can get you. Oh. Yeah, you can tell us about the airplane again. <laughs> about the airplane. Oh, it's, it's coming into camp out there on the it took us all out there and uh, see who could see it first. There was a, we was all down the trench, looking up over the trench, you know, the bank of it. And 
The ducks all seen it. It just looks like about the size of a pinhead. And kept getting closer and closer and finally somebody else hauled out. I said, and it was one of the old, little old airplanes, two wings, one above the other, and landed out there in the field. We all had to go out there the next day and see it. And uh, it had one, one propeller, I think, on the thing. It is, it's a small one. Yeah, I see one, one, one once in a while past here. It, it, it's two, got two wings on one. Did you take a ride in it? Huh? Did you take a ride in it? No, I wouldn't have got my thing for a hundred dollars. <laughs> I had my feet on the ground. I was going to keep them. Uh... You remember when you saw your first airplane? I don't remember it, don't get it. I remember when I seen my first train. Oh, well, tell us about that. <laughs> well, we was at Niagara, and we was at uh, uh, Mr. Pewitt's store, and I heard one of coming, a racket, you know, and I stood down the door and watched that thing come up right across to the door. It just come right past the door, you know. And I watched that till it, I don't think it ever did get out of my sight. It just kept it going so long, you know. Yeah. I had to go. My parents was ready to go home, and I had to go. I don't think I ever seen the tail end of it. Airplane, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember seen the first airplane, but I, I can remember uh, about uh, seeing these here beacon lights, you know, that they have at the airplane ground mm -hmm. there. And uh, it's down at, uh, at my uncle's, and his boy was watching it, you know, and he was, didn't know what in the world that was. He'd always hear the world come to the end, and they thought that was it. <laughs> they just scared to death. I thought that was now the world. The world coming to an end. <laughs> <laughs> that, where was that at? At Lebanon. Lebanon. Can uh, you remember other people who went in the army at the same time? Did you have any brothers or friends? Who, uh, who went with you to the army? Huh? Who enlisted? When you went to the army, who enlisted? Yeah, who was with you? Oh, uh, it was. Uh, I guess there must have been thirty enlisted. If he wants their names, if he. Oh. Did you have any brothers that went with you? Huh? No, you don't have no brother. Okay. No. Thanks. What about friends? From the same area? Yeah, Enoch Odell was one. And Kirk Buttram. I know they was. Do you know any more of them? Huh? Do you know any more of their names besides yeah, Enoch? Enoch Odell was one of them. Me and him were buddies. And the Kendrick, Claude Kendrick, Kendrick. Uh, I've got the picture of them. Oh, one of those long pictures. You better hunt them up, Betty. Where they at? There is that thing. Did you get uh, letters from home when you were out in Kansas? Huh? Did you, you get what? any letters or packages from home when you were out in Camp Funston? Oh, I can't understand him. Did you get any letters from home when? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I've got one or two here, yes. <laughs> what about uh, all like socks and scarves? Did people send you that kind of thing when you were in the Army? Do uh, what? I didn't understand you. I, I wish. Sometimes they would send sweaters or scarves or socks to the soldiers and 
I wonder if he got any packages like that when he was in the Army. Yeah. I don't think they They yeah. didn't send you no package, did they? Huh? They didn't send you any packages, did they? Clothes or? No, not at all. No, uh, I got a package uh, for Christmas. Uh, women used to knit socks, gloves. Yeah. I got a pair of socks from somebody. I never did uh, answer the card or name was in that. I never did answer it. It was uh, made out of goat wool. <laughs> I had them after we was married, didn't you? Probably did. Yeah, I think we did. They were made out of goat wool. Hmm. And she knitted that. Can you remember uh, when you got home what you wanted to eat? When you got home from the Army, what did you want to eat instead of the Army food? Uh, I can remember. What did you want? Huh? What did you crave to eat when you got home? You what? What tasted good to you when you got home? Oh, cornbread and milk. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I was raised on it. <laughs> And I wonder when you were in school during World War One, did you study anything about the war? Yeah, no, yeah, no bad. But did they talk about it in school? Uh, Some times we did. My teacher husband was, was in the army with Calvin. Oh. Some times we would have to go over there and get us a fish. I went over there with them to get the fish, and I, I, I helped them cook a whole lot. And it was white on one side and dark on the other. Red big, and I had to carry it over my shoulder, a great old big thing. Huh. And then we took it up and cut it up and cook it. We, we had to cook in a big old round. He, I don't know what, I don't remember what they had with steam, I guess, because we had the steam uh, in our camps, barracks. Might have been, might have been kerosene used right. I don't remember what they used on that. But anyhow, I had to find out their captain. He, no doubt, could make cornbread. As his, his, his dot, he liked cornbread. What uh, kind of uniform did you have? Ah, uh, come down here and then hold here and then lay step down here. Oh, uh, you know, I had a big old floppy cat. And, and uh, for Christmas. Before Christmas, I was on guard, and uh, through the years, and fingers, and I had had to carry my gun under my arm and hand it in my pocket. Then it wasn't long after that while well, we got our overcoats. After winter's over, well, we got our overcoats. <laughs> Was he wearing a uniform when you met that day at the... Yeah. He had come out on the mail hack. Yeah. Yeah. They was carrying the mail in just a hack, you know, then. And my sister rode out with him. She was coming in, and she rode out with Calvin. She seen him before I did, but she didn't get him. <laughs> <laughs> What was your sister's name? Uh, uh, Bente. Bente, it'd be N T A. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what rank were you in the Army? Huh? What rank were you in the Army? Oh, I didn't get no stripes. They wouldn't give me none until I got home. <laughs> I got some of the pins up there. Do you still have your uniform? Uh -uh. Well, I don't know. I guess it was a wave. 
You know, they're made out of cotton, I uh, mean, out of wood, you know, and they, they're hard to keep. So we got upstairs, and I, I think I put them away in a box and in a closet. Huh. But I couldn't get up there to see, because I've got the shingles. And I've been awful bad, too. I just didn't think I was going to make it. Huh. And I, I, I could let Betty get up there and look. <laughs> But she'd have a time of getting all them old things pulled out of the closet. <laughs> so I said, you just won't bother. They, they gave me a big old overcoat. Come way down here and they said, you had to cut them off with a short and others come up along here. They just, you know, want me to cut them off. I said, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to cut some of the government property. No. No, I didn't cut it off either. I, I brought it home with me. Mm. It might still be up there. <laughs> Some captain of the, uh, I could tell by us where they'd sewed the things on the side, you know. Yeah. I, I could tell uh, if he was a lieutenant or a captain or something. Uh, so I, I just kept the rest of them as all, all short. What we call them short tails. Short tails, huh? Uh, I put on, uh, call it barn guard. Well, it had the horses in it. That so one cold night. So. It's booming cold. Oh, I don't know. It's way down below zero. I went in, I went in there. I went through, made one trip through there. See the horses all around. I went in there. Had a little, little house set in the middle of the stove in it. And, all standing around that stove, wasn't the room so down. Actually, here come the captain, officer of the guard. I, I figured we'd all get into it because we was all on duty. And it was all standing around that stove. He got on it, turned around at the time too. It's pretty cold, ain't it? He just opened the door and went on. We was all glad that happened. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to be on guard at the court martial. Did you have gas mask? Huh? Did you have gas mask? Gas. Huh? Gas mask. Yeah, yeah. That could We went through that gas tunnel. They had to go through a tunnel. They had the gas in there. And uh, I didn't put mine on. So we got about halfway through and I grabbed it and put it on. Come on out. And I was sick and miles of water. And got outside there. He said, didn't you put that on? I said, not until I got about halfway through. Supposed to put it on first. I, I didn't figure it was too bad. It was pretty. It's stinking stuff. Did you have masks for the horses? Huh? Did you have masks for the horses? Yeah, I had them, but I didn't put them on. For your yeah. horses? Huh? You have it for the horses? Did you have masks for the horses? No, no. Had feed bags hung yeah. over the nose, but <laughs> feeding that ground feed. What about the harness? Huh? What about the harness? Harnesses. They had good horns. Had good horns. Yeah. So if he didn't know, he'd bring in one that's never been broke or nothing. He'd rub it and ball bark it. We had one of course I I didn't have any anything to do with them, but I could see the what they the, the what they liked and that. But some of them never had harness on or nothing. But I mean, they were, uh, 
or use six horses, lead horse, and I forget now what they call the, the lead team, and another they call it something, and the one back next to the case on, they call it, call it something. So I don't, I couldn't remember all of them, but uh, I didn't have anything to do with the horses. Mm. I had to ride that old <coughs> gun. I had a review, a company review, I took it before old Wood, General Wood, and uh, had to sit there in my arm close like that. Sit there for two hours. Finally got through. And they showed that to us, and after the, a few nights after that, well, they showed it up there in the moving picture. Oh, he did? Yeah, it, it was pretty nice to look at. What was General Wood like? Huh? What was General Wood like? Uh -huh. <laughs> what was General Wood like? What was General Wood like? Oh, he had an old peg leg. He had one leg off. Hmm. He was a pretty nice old man, but he didn't get out much. Uh, I drove the car for him one week. His uh, chauffeur, he, his old chauffeur, had been with him, I guess, ever since camp was built. And he got sick, and so. Uh, they found out that I could drive a car, a little Model T. So they called on me to go drive. I dreaded that worse than anything in the world. Being up with a hot society, that the way I called it. <laughs> <laughs> and, but we made it out pretty good. He, I could take him anywhere in the camp he wanted to go. And, of course, I'd, I'd, I'd get out and open the door for him. And, he got ready to come in, he'd come out, he'd get in, I'd shut the door and get in the wood driving. He'd tell me where he wanted to go. And I, I was well acquainted with all of that. <laughs> One night, I got up with a toothache. <laughs> yeah. I tried to get somebody there to uh, law to go with me. He had we well protected. He had to have permission to get so and so. Well, I said I'm going to go to the doctor. I said I'm going to have that tooth pulled, regardless. So I dug out. They told me where it was at. I had to go around and see the biggest part of the camp to get to it. I think it's 11 o'clock when I got up there to him. He pulled my tooth, busted, busted it. He had to take it out piece by piece. Hmm. So I didn't get back in for, I think about noon the next day, they was, uh, they was all haunting where, where I was at and all that. <laughs> Did he give you anything for the pain when they pulled your tooth? Huh? Did he give you any painkiller when they pulled your tooth? Yeah, he's all, he's all swelled up, you know, the toothache. Didn't give you no painkiller, did he? No. <laughs> Don't guess I know what a painkiller was then. Huh. Now, what was Missouri like here during the war? What about it? What was it like in Missouri during the war? What was it like in Missouri? Mm -hmm. I was going to school. But can you tell me what kind of things were going on during the war here in Missouri? I had to just work and trying to save up a little. <laughs> You know, help out you. You had them there, books in. You had to. You couldn't get anything. You know, just 
so much that everything was ra rationed. Oh, okay. And everybody just had to work and, and make their own way. You just get a little sugar, just so much sugar, and coffee, and just so much. Did that change how you cooked? Uh-huh. Did that change how you prepare a meal then, when you couldn't get some things? Yeah, it changed your, your cooking. Yeah, you'd have to leave off part of it. <laughs> <laughs> it just it got by, though. Because you could get by a little cheaper if they try. Can you remember anything about the Red Cross? Yeah. Red Cross was always ready to help. Did they ever ask you to work for them? No. Okay. I didn't work for Red Cross, but I worked for the uh, the exchange, farmers exchange over there dressing turkeys. Huh. Dress, I had to help dress turkeys over there, and, and then uh, the Calvin men, me and Calvin was married, and we took a load. We had a truck, you know, and we'd take them dressed turkeys to Springfield. Just take them loose, you know, and lay them down and take them loose. <laughs> Different to <laughs> what it is now. Yeah. What about Liberty Bonds? Can you remember anything about those during the war? Yeah, I can remember talking about them. I don't think we ever had any. It, uh... And what about people with German names? You remember how they were treated during the war? Ah, uh, they wasn't too friendly with them, I don't think. <laughs> Did you write letters to anybody that was in the army when you were a girl then? Was I ever out there? Did you write any letters to the soldiers? Okay. You mean, did I know any more of the soldiers? Now, did you write any letters, like, to the fellows in the army? Okay. Do you remember any any women that were active in the I room? I wrote to him after I got acquainted with him. <laughs> 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 He just come in on the visit. You got sit on it. Oh, I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what about when the war ended? Can you remember that? Yeah. What was it like here when the war ended? Oh, everybody's happy. Shouting and uh, throwing things up in there. <laughs> Boys would get to come home, I was happy about it. Can you remember how you heard that the war was over? I don't know. How did you hear that the war was over? Well, I don't remember now. It just, it just uh, <laughs> echoed everywhere. <laughs> the news would get out, you know. <laughs> And did, did you have the flu during the, <clears throat> the war? Uh, Anybody in your family have the flu? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You're lucky then. What about around Lebanon or this area? Did, did they have the flu here in this area? Well, some of them did. Bad, too. A lot of people died. Okay. That was a bad flu. Mm -hmm. Were there any movies you could go see at that time? What? Was there, were there any movies that you could go see, like in Lebanon or? Oh, movies? Mm -hmm. No. I wondered about the newsreels that. Didn't go to very many movies. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
I'll tell you one thing. Me and my captain went out on a pistol practice. And he, he said I was the best shot there was in the camp. And he wanted to try me out. So I had an old 45. I don't know how old it was, but it's old. And uh, I, I fired two shots at the uh, at, uh, target. Both, both hit. An old crow coming on, I hear the quark and coming on. I just reached up there and plugged him. He fell right down, right in front of me. Oh, you're not done that! Not this long! Yeah, I had to take his, uh, then the next, got a fire, barrel busted on that little pistol. Did you? The rejects. So I got his gun and fired three shots and hit every one of them. He said, I'm not going to shoot, so are you. <laughs> now, we did go to movies huh? after we was married. We, my sister lived down to Venice Springs, down mm -hmm. there, her and her man. And we went down there and stayed a few days with that. And uh, while we did Lebanon, we, me and Calvin bought us a, a graphophone, picture roller, and we got 50 records with it. And boy, talk about the music. We <laughs> 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 and then we went to the show about every night. Huh. And uh, we all took mumps. <laughs> mumps. Caught the mumps. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'd already been told. How much did it cost to go to the show? Yeah. <laughs> you remember how much it cost to get in to the movies? No, I don't remember. That wasn't very much. It was quite a bit then, but yeah, wouldn't be now. Was there a celebration when the soldiers came home? Any kind of parades or anything around here? Well, there was uh, after the declared peace, you know, while well, they had to pray. Oh, they did? Was the parade in Lebanon or in Hartville or? You know, I just don't remember. Just don't. Can you tell me more about uh, the end of the war at Camp Funston? You said there was a celebration in the oh, end of the police. I don't know they quite a bit. It's not much to tell about it. They had a big zone up there that we all had to go to do our trading, see moving pictures and things like that. It's all uh, it's kind of a past place to go. Pool tables and ones like shooting galleries and just kind of a place to spend the time of the evening after you get off of duty. Big place. Kind of a recreation hall. Huh? Kind of a recreation hall. Uh -huh. I didn't understand. Uh, kind of a recreation hall at the post. Oh, yeah. rec recreation hall. Huh? Recreation hall. <laughs> Dancing hall. <laughs> Dancing hall. <laughs> Get old, get hard here. You well, <laughs> blow <blowed> up. <laughs> <laughs> what about the depression in the 1930s? Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> you can tell us about that. You tell about the depression. Huh? You can tell about the depression. Depression. Yeah, 1930. Huh? 1930. That's when we like lost our mm. home. This house here. Now, did you build this house? Yeah. Tell us about that. Tell about building your home. Huh? Tell him about building your house. Yeah. That's we married. We had lived in an old house right down there. After we got this part of the place, I decided we'd build a house. And I'd go cut logs and take them to the sawmill, get the lumber sawed. 
And uh, I'll probably build it back to all myself. You get all that stone work? No. I had to hire that done. I built the house and the barn and the chicken house out there and the well house. Built all that and had, had two well drills. Had the well drill before we moved up here. What year did you build the house? Do you remember what year it was? Uh, let's see. I bet it was about five years old. How old are you now? In about 1940. About 1920. 40. So you were married quite a while before you built this house. Huh? You were married quite a while before you built this house. Yeah, we lived in, in a house down there by the road. Okay. Tore it down and put it in this one. <laughs> and we uh, we did we put the ceiling up. The uh, around the walls out of the oak and uh, put tar paper then on the outside around that and then uh, we've got to living in this house. That tar paper blowed off in the winter time. <laughs> Lord talk about getting cold. <laughs> so you didn't get the stone up for a while. <laughs> We had a stove, we got some wood. <laughs> and you said you almost lost the house to the bank or in the depression? Yeah, we had uh, a loan on it. And uh, this there, uh, this fella, he, he tried his best to think he was going to get it. Tell him he had a dream one night. And he dreamt that uh, the devil come in. Now this is kind of a funny dream, but it's so. And he said after the devil left, why, Jesus come in. And uh, he said, many say, he said, we're going to have to do something. Because we're going to lose this farm if we don't do something. So we went down to Lebanon and uh, <coughs> I said, uh, What is you call it where you get your loan? Huh? What is you call it where we got the loan to build our lumber? Our house. Uh, oak lumber. Got it. Well, honey. Uh, oak lumber. Got what? It. what uh, where did we borrow money at? Uh, pay for our home. Oh. Down at Lebanon. Hmm. A Spencer was his name. He uh, he was agent for some company in St. Louis. They have got the money to pay on it. Where you you pay your interest? When you pay your interest, half of that goes in on your principal. Oh. And uh, we got enough to pay out. He went to pay that guy off. Spencer Reagan. And he said, I didn't want to pay. <laughs> oh, he said, you're going to get it. <laughs> he's on the farm. That's what he's working. He'd have got it too if we could have that work around <laughs> it. The way we had the money to borrow to pay uh, so much of the principal and the interest ever so often. I went down there one day, we did, and I said, I, I can pay the interest, but I can't pay any on the interest, principal. So, do I sell something? And he just, oh, it's all right. I said, we'll make it all right. And he just put the interest still on the interest till the Georgia's. He didn't, mark, didn't cut it off. So I still had to pay interest on it. Finally got 
We had a few you know, cabins. Pay more. Uh, Fe it was a, a federal loan, I believe it was, wasn't it? That's it. Mm. Federal loan. And we went and bought, bought us an old sow. And that old sow would have a batch of pigs about the time our interest would come due. <laughs> and they was ready to sell about the time. And that old sow paid for our farm. Huh. That way. Of course, the cattle fed the pigs, you see. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to see people start out like that now, maybe. I was going to ask you uh, how things have changed since you all were young until today. Oh, mercy. It's changed <laughs> double. <laughs> you wouldn't see nobody start out like we did now. We my first carpet I made. I made Wait. my first carpet. How did you make that? I made that toe sacks. Toe sacks? Gunny sacks. I took and I sewed them together. And uh, I put newspapers all down on my floor. And uh, I stretched my carpet then on top of that, as tight as I could get it, you know, and tacked it down all the way around. And then I put, made paste out of flour and water. And I put on that, let it dry. And then I took uh, uh, floor paint, gray floor paint. Huh. And I uh, painted that all over there. And that was the prettiest thing you ever seen. They're interviewing Daddy, but they're. And uh, that just wore and wore and wore. To load till we can do better. That's pretty interesting. I had I boarded school teachers. I don't know how many did my boy through four. And uh, he got me a new Charlie Oak stove. That's all we had new. And he made a lot of our furniture. Yeah, that's what I heard. You still have pieces that he made? Uh, got several upstairs. <laughs> made that little shelf over there in the corner. Oh, yeah. yeah that shelf, he made that. And our boys, they made their, just coming right behind him. One of them made that little thing right there. Mm hmm. The grand, grandsons made them that. Okay. Yes, I, I've got one tale I want to tell you before okay. I forget it. Uh, my, my dad, he's driving some hogs in Dallas County. Yeah, go ahead. Who was that? Mars. Huh? Yeah, go ahead and tell me. Go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead and tell him. About the hogs in Dallas County. Go ahead and tell me about the hogs. Uh, we, I was about 12 years old. Dad bought a lot of hogs. I think it's 90, 90 head of them. We were going to drive them over into Dallas County to, to feed them out. He bought a, he had some steers over there. And so we had to drive them hogs over there. We were about, about three days of driving them over there, foot. They were leaving out home or other. Across from Crooked Creek, a big flat rock. Oh, a really great big, and I guess it's 12, 14 foot wide. The edge of it down in the edge of the water. And we got all the hogs all across but one. He just wouldn't get in that water at all. So I think to myself, I was on that flat rock, and the, the hogs started to cross it. And I think to myself, I'll just push you off in that in the water. And, 
make me a swim. Uh, I'll push it on all the way around in and out with it. So there it was. But I got the hog across, but I had to go back home and change clothes. <laughs> uh, I, that's what, one of the little accidents I'll never will forget. What do you think your secret to long life is? Uh, what do you think your secret of a long life is? I didn't understand it, baby. Secret to a long life. I don't know. <laughs> now, why do you think you've lived this long? Oh, well, I don't know, but the good Lord just let us live. <laughs> We've uh, tried to work for him all of our lives and do all we can for people, try to help people. And I guess it's just his blessings. Okay. Maybe you can ask him the same question. Why do you think you've lived to be a hundred years old? Why do you think you've lived this long for? I don't know. That's not somebody older than me. <laughs> what do you say? That's somebody older than him. <laughs> <laughs> How long did your father live? Huh? How long did your parents live to be? His mother was almost a hundred. She was ninety, uh -huh. ninety-six, wasn't she? Wasn't your mom ninety-six when she died? Huh? Dad? Huh? Wasn't your mom ninety-six when she died? I think so, my. Your dad was. He wasn't so. No, he had leakage of the heart. He did live too long. And uh, how long did your parents live? Well, they didn't live to be very old. Huh. Dad, he got his two or three social security checks. Uh, <laughs> Mom, she lived, she lived to be pretty old. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh -huh. Is there anything you'd like to add while we still have the camera rolling? I don't know. I'd like for you, I've got a picture. I'd like, go go get him that there picture and hang it up in there. That, that's got all that reading on it. You want to do it now or wait till? Oh, we can put it on here and then I'll take a copy of it too. Can you <laughs> get through there? <laughs> Good. pictures here while we're going. It's just our 50th. Oh, your 50th. 50th anniversary. I see. I'll just give it to you to hold up. I ask you, what's the secret of a long marriage? You probably couldn't hear me from the barking. <laughs> I say, what's the secret of a long marriage? Huh? What's the secret of a long marriage? Oh. No, huh? What's the secret? Huh? What's the secret of a long marriage? 
What's the secret of a long marriage? Oh. Well, I tell you, we work hard, and we attend church. Work. He was a deacon in church about 50 years, and I was a clerk in the church about that long. And uh, we'd go to church and do all we could. And then uh, we'd work hard on the farm, and we'd get kind of sort of out of humor or anything. We'd take off and go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, that's all I can just tell you now. <laughs> Does he have any comments on that? You got any comments on it? Huh? You got any comments on it? What? Living for the Lord and, and working hard and going to fishing. Working for the Lord and serving Him and and working hard and well, get out of humor, we'd go fishing. Yeah, go to fishing. Fishing was my motto. Still got it. <laughs> well, I'd take him fishing whenever he could get there. Take him and set him. Came to the pond, let him fish. Oh, he still fishes then. Huh? He can still go fishing then. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, he's a fisherman. Did you find that long army picture? Oh, I see. Yeah, he's got several there. I think he had a long one, but where it's at. Is your picture in here? That's Cape Thompson. Oh, yeah, that's got some neat pictures. I bet you can't find another one. Hmm. Is your picture in here anywhere? Hmm. Maybe I'll give that to you. Can you find your picture? Uh, my picture ain't in there, but I'm in my oh. barracks. The barracks is in there, okay. I thought they had a real long one with this picture. My head. Well, this was the sixty-third anniversary. Oh. Uh, right. My side got gone. That's our 50th anniversary, and up there. Oh, yeah. Is there a picture of you when you first got married, you said? Oh, okay. I'll bring in a, a coffee stand here. Uh, I don't know. What's this one? July 4th, 1918. Uh, hold on, where's that? Yeah, okay. uh, I hear he I thought, I thought I'd know. Okay. Fine. You ain't got no tie on him. You never would wear a tie. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you hold that up and I'll zero in on it. Where's that postcard at, Betty? It's over here. Oh, I can't find it. 
Well, the water is fine. What was going on Sorry. in that picture? What? What was going on in that picture? Sunday school group, church. Ain't that your church group? Huh? That's your church group, ain't it? Well, that's one of the army. So that's, you went that, to army? Yeah, that's one of the ones of the army. Tell me, tell me about that picture. Huh? What can you tell me about that picture? That's uh, when we were leaving out to go to camp. Where was it? We then? had together at the courthouse, Hardville. Then we all gathered there. Then had to get on cars and things and took us up to Mansfield to catch another bunch coming in from the east. And all went to Kansas City. At a at a supper in Kansas City Hotel or at a Depot. Where was that picture taken at? Taken at uh, this was taken at Hartville. Oh, okay. Nineteen yeah. and eighteen. Huh? Is that the courthouse in the background? July. Yeah. The July. Twenty fifth. Nineteen. Nineteen and eighteen. Nine. I thought that's when the war closed. I can't halfway see. That's pretty good. <laughs> My picture is right, right in there. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> One without a tie. <laughs> Okay. Now I'll swing over and get this one. That's him in uniform. Let's see. You can kind of hold it straight up and down and I'll get it. Got it. This is our wedding picture. Oh, okay. Good. I'll just get it too then if you hold it up. Where were you married at? At home. On this farm or your house? Oh, no, or? Dad's, Dad's place. Is that pretty close? Uh, Is that close by? Yeah, about four miles or something north of the Grove Springs. Okay. I'll go get the stand and copy pictures. <laughs> 